Palyavatarayar knew that many people were talking about his marriage in old age. He had heard that Kundavab Prati was one of those who spoke blasphemously. But so far no one has told him what Kundave said. Now hearing it from Nandini's mouth, his heart was like a blacksmith's furnace. Gup, gup came a hot sigh. Nandini's tears served as fuel to fuel his inner fire. My dear! Did that sandalwood lady say that? Did she call me a buffalo? Let it be, what I am doing to her, her, look! I crush her like a buffalo crushes a lily vine with her foot, look! And yet! Her, her, Palyavatarayar stammered, unable to speak due to anger. The look on his face cannot be described. Nandini tries to calm him down. She clasped his iron hand with her flowered hand and clasped her fingers together. Natha! I know you will not bear the shame I have inflicted. But the mighty lion who cleaves Mad Thakaja's skull and drinks the blood, can't pounce on a vile cat. Kuntava is a female cat. But the great sorceress! By magic and magic she sways all to her will. This she is controlling the Chola kingdom. Her spell must be defeated by alternative spells. If you don't like it, tell me. I'm leaving this mansion today. She whined again. The fury of the destroyer subsided, passionate. No, no. Take a thousand witches. Don't you go. You are my life. What is it? You are my life. What will this body do if life is gone? Your keeping me away now is killing me. All this magic. Do you know? Can you tell me a spell? Said. Natha. Why magic when you have sword and wand in your hand? Leave magic to me, demon woman. Why magic and magic to you? Said Nandini. Yet we have not begun to live according to the worldly custom. You are keeping me apart by saying fasting and fasting. You hold hands and torture your married husband. Or somehow poison me with your hand and kill me. Nandini covered her ears and said, Oh! Don't say such deadly words. If you say that again, I'll do as you say. I'll drink poison and die. Then you can rest easy. She said. No, no, no more. Forgive me. Shall I have peace of mind if you die of poison? I am half mad now and then I shall be full mad. Not a. Why should you be mad? The day we held hands and wed, we became one flesh and one soul. Life and soul mingled, soul and soul joined, each beat of their heart echoes here in mine. Every thought that rises in their bosoms here in mine. Reflected in the mirror. When their brows narrow, my eyes are troubled. When their mustaches throbbing, my bowels throbbing. After we have become alive, why think of this vile body? This is a body made of dust, this is a body that will one day burn to ashes and become dust with dust. Stop! Stop! My ears are ringing at your cruel words! Screamed the reaper. And without giving her a chance to speak, he spoke, Did you say that your body is made of clay? Lie! Lie! Do not tell such a big lie with your honey-scented mouth! Did you say that your body is made of clay? Not a day. There are so many women in the world. Lord Brahma could have made them of clay or of stone. It may have been mixed with charcoal and somber. But do you know how Brahma made your Thirumani? He collected fallen flowers from the Mandara trees in Devaloka, he came to Tamil Nadu and picked and collected Sentamarai flowers. He fed vanilla beans in that broth. Bandit brought the banars of Tamil Nadu and asked them to play the harp. He also mixed the music of that year. Because of such a wonderful combination, Lord Brahma created your Thirumani. Natha! You speak as if you have seen from the side of Brahma. Am I the only one caught in all these comments? There are so many princesses in that village, born in royal clans. You have been married to them for so long. It has only been two and a half years since you saw me. Before Nandini said, interrupted. It seems that he wanted to express the flood of emotions that was raging in his heart at least through words. 
it was as if he was trying to put out the burning fire about him by dousing it with words. From there I was returning along the banks of Akonda Kaveri. On the way I saw you in a dense forest. At first I couldn't believe you were standing there. I closed my eyes and opened them. Even then you stood. You must be a forest angel, when you get close, you disappear. Thinking that I approached. Even then you didn't disappear. As told in the Puranas, it must be a divine maiden or a Gandharva woman who came to earth after receiving a curse from heaven, you don't know human language. Thinking that, woman. Who are you? I asked that. You replied in good Tamil. I am an orphan, I take refuge in you, save me you said. When you were brought on the palanquin, my mind thought of everything that it had not thought of. Wherever, whenever, you seemed like seen before. But after thinking about it, I don't know where. Suddenly the veil that covered my mind was removed, the truth dawned. I have never seen you before in this birth. But it was known that I had seen it in many previous births. All the memories of that previous birth came crashing down. You were born in this world as a virgin, I was Devendran then. I renounced the kingdom of heaven and braved the Rishi's curse to seek you. Then I was born as Chandanu Maharaja. I saw you hunting along the banks of the Ganges, I fell in love with you, Gunga, who was shaped like an earthly woman. Then once upon a time I was born as Kovalan in Pumpatinam of Kaveri, you had incarnated as a beauty. I had forgotten you for some time due to the delusion that obscured my knowledge. Then the veil of illusion was removed. I know your beauty. I took him to Madurai city. On the way, I left you at the shepherd's hut and went to sell Silambu. I lost my life because of deceit. In revenge for that, I saw you in this birth when you were returning from Madurai after destroying the Pandian clan. I realized that you are Kanagi who was separated hundreds of years ago. Nandini did not look at his face and looked in the other direction when Palyavatarayar was telling stories of past births like this. So the Reaper did not notice the sinful differences that appeared on her face at that time. Had he noticed, he doubted he would have kept talking. When he paused to catch his breath, Nandini looked back at him and said, Natha. Your examples are not so apt. It's all a bit ominous. If you want, call yourself Cupid and Mirathi. She smiled as before. The face of Palyavatarayar then blossomed with joy and pride. No matter how wretched a man is, who is not delighted to be called Cupid by the woman he loves. However, he spoke as if he didn't want to brag. Kanmani. It is very appropriate to call you Ratai. But is it appropriate to call me Cupid? You say it because of your abundance of love, said. Nada. You are Cupid in my eyes. Boys are beautiful and brave. The world will say that there is no warrior like them in this south country. Next, what gives beauty to manly men is kindness to the poor. I am the witness that they have that kindness. These who do not know what town, what clan. You brought and sheltered the poor orphan girl. You showered me with unparalleled love and support. I will not make such people wait for long. The time for the end of my fast and fasting is near. She said. Kanmani. Just tell me what fast and what fast. I will finish it as soon as I can. Said the king of Palvur. The descendants of this Sundara Chola, who thinks that Cupid is no different than himself, should not ascend the throne of Tanjavur. The pride of that proud Kundave should be suppressed. Nandini. You can assume that those two things have been fulfilled. Adithan and Aromas Hivarman do not have titles. All the leaders of this kingdom have agreed that the title should be given to Madhurandha. Everyone agreed? Really? Nandini asked emphatically. All but two or three have agreed. Kajumbaluran, Malayaman, and Parthapendra will never agree with us. Never mind them. But to be careful until the matter is done. There is no doubt about that. I am taking all precautions. It is only when a mischief happens due to the stupidity of others. Even today, one such mischief has happened. 
A youth from Kanchi has tricked Kalantagan and met the emperor and given him straw. Aha! You have been praising their brother incessantly. Did I not say that he lacks skill? He's gone wild about this. Something says the boy showed us our palace signet ring. This is how cheated people make excuses. Didn't you try to catch the cheated youth? What if we don't try? The hunt has already begun inside and outside the fort. They will be caught anyway. All this will not contribute to our cause. When the emperor dies, Madhurand Hakan will surely ascend the throne. Natha. The time has come for me to let you know what my fast is. Dear. I'm just asking you to say that too. Madhuranthagan that strange child, the one who gives teeth if a woman, my fast will not be fulfilled because of his coming to the throne. What else can be fulfilled? Tell me your wish. I am there to fulfill it. O oh king! A famous Josian saw my horoscope when I was a child. He told me that I would be in a lot of trouble till I was eighteen. What else did he say? He said that the muscles will change after eighteen years of prayer. He said that he will attain an unparalleled exalted position. It is true what he said. Tell me who is that Josian. I will anoint him. Natha. Honey. There's one more thing that Josian said. Shall I say it? Say it. Say it. The husband who takes me by the hand and marries me will be crowned with jewels and sit on the throne of a great empire as an emperor to whom the kings of fifty-six nations will come and submit. Will you fulfill that? When these words fell on the ear of Palyavatarayar, Nandini, and the couch in front of him rotated. Lata Mandapam revolved. The pillars of that hall rotated. The dark grove in front swirled. Treetops swirled in the moonlight. The stars in the sky revolved. The mansions on both sides revolved. The world is spinning. <laughs>